busy or anything. Which one of these is better, Goonies or Monster Squad? What are you, trying to get punched? No, I just want to a fun movie that's not too scary. Well, the obvious choice is Monster Squad. You want to watch Monster Squad. Actually, I've never seen the Goonies before. I think I want to do this one. I've never hit a kid before. I mean, I'm, I've never seen the Monster Squad. I'm going to pick this one. That's what I thought. It's a dollar. It's a dollar and you're a meanie. Kids. They suck. God, I hate kids. But you know what I don't hate? Movies from when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, hello, internet fans, and welcome to 3B Video. I'm your host, Rotten Roger DeMarco, and today we're going to be talking about Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang's 1991 film, The Giver fucking right we're talking about the Giver. So for those of you who don't know about this film, here is your plot synopsis. You've got this wannabe Aikido student named Sean who accidentally stumbles upon this mechanical device that these bad guys are hunting and he discovers that this weird little mechanical device puts a suit of armor, of alien-like armor over his body and increases his natural ability by like 100%. He becomes this crazy kung fu alien ninja mutant thing. I don't know. This was a series of anime or a comic book or something of that nature, but I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and pretend that I know what that is. But what I do know is that I grew up on this movie. But before we get into my overall thoughts of the film, first, let's take a look at Ryan Rogers! Splatter fact. We have 12 dead bodies. We have zero real titties, but we do have two monster titties, monster nipples. If you look close enough, they're there. So I guess they count. We have monster suit fist fighting, psychic slapping, gratuitous cartoon transitions, <laughs> rapping for no reason, multiple obligatory mutations, random Linnea Quigley, backflip travel, you know, every kung fu movie, you gotta cover a small distance from you and your opponent with backflips. Like when you land, you won't be dizzy as shit and you can still fight. Ball yanking, not that kind of ball. One Jaws reference, main act monster mayhem, and one prison swole dinosaur mutant. The methods of death include but are not limited to brain popping, throat slash, Saw blade to the dome, sliced, gutted, microwaved, pop, microscoped, I got nothing for that, skull ripping, natural causes, and exploded. Okay, so now on to my overall thoughts of this film, guys. Honestly, I'm really surprised that it's taken me this long to get to this movie for you guys because this was 100% a childhood staple for me. I think that if you were growing up in the 90s and you were a fan of things like Bloodsport and you played Mortal Kombat and you were a Power Rangers fan, a Ninja Turtles fan, that this movie is like the most absolute perfect combination of all of those things. It gives you this cartoony comic book style dialogue. It gives you these really weird and hokey kung fu fights like a Ninja Turtles film or a kickboxer or blood sport. But it also gives you these really, really badass mutants and monsters that are straight from the brain of Screamin' Mad George. You might know that name because he is a very well-known makeup effects artist who is responsible for a lot of groundbreaking effects. And it also doesn't hurt that Brian Usna from the Reanimator fame was a producer in this film. So you kind of know what you're getting into. Great effects work, all of these nasty, nasty things going on in this movie, but they dial it back just enough to where this is super acceptable for kids. I mean, little kids aren't gonna see the monster nipples. They're not gonna be like, Dad, I see two monster nipples under that fur. But the adults will be going, mm-hmm, I see them titties. Mm-hmm, monster titties. 
monster titties. In all honesty, the main set piece of this film is the creature design. You cannot look at the creature designs in this movie and tell me that they're not amazing. Even by today's standards, these designs absolutely crush the stuff that's being put on screen nowadays. This is a perfect film to usher a small child into horror because it's so slapsticky. It's so funny, but these creature designs are second to none and it's just a very hokey, fun monster movie that is perfect for all ages, really. Because the thing about the storytelling in this film is that it's very tongue-in-cheek. Everybody who was involved in this film knows the tone of this film. You have Mark Hamill of Star Wars fame playing this sleuthy detective man named Max Reed. He's sort of your exposition on the go. He's your exposition with a mustache, if you will. I must ask you a question to progress the plot point. <laughs> if you're a fan of stuff like Ninja Turtles, but you just want a little bit more violence, you want a little bit more mutant action with your kung fu, then this movie is definitely perfect because it takes all of those Saturday morning tropes, really ramps up that nasty factor. And the one thing about all of these kung fu movies or these monster movies, whatever, is the trope of gratuitous whooshing noises whenever someone is doing kung fu or doing backflips as if they were so wicked fast, the mere movement of said uh, extremity would cause a whoosh. You know, something like Oh, a couple of the karate chops even. Real fast though. Like that. Just gratuitous whooshies, which should have been a splatter fact now that I think of it. This movie is perfect for horror fans and action fans and cartoon fans. It's really such a strange mix that it's one of those things that you have to see to believe. Because I think that this movie is just such a, a perfect storm of violence and slapstick comedy. And it's got all the right people involved in it. You have Michael Berryman from The Hills Have Eyes fame playing one of the lead baddie mutants named Whisker. And he is just fucking terrifying in this movie. You have Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator fame playing Dr. East instead of Dr. West. Very subtle. You see what you see what Brian Usna and everyone did there? They changed directions of his name. David Gale, who is also from Reanimator, playing the conglomerate evil of evil. You always have to have one of these guys in a suit that works in like a high rise and they just think they're fucking smarter than everybody. That's David Gale. David Gale plays the character, Fulton, who runs this Kronos lab, evil mastermind behind all of these crazy experiments and trying to get the Giver for himself so that he can have this suit of armor. And in the meantime, he is constructing all of these weird mutant men, mutant women to do his bidding. And for some reason they can just decide when they want to transform into mutants. It's really muddy, but it's okay because it's just wild and silly. And another thing that is super awesome for me is that you have Jimmy Walker playing Stryker one of the other mutants. And I know that this movie has come under some backlash for the creature design of Stryker, but I don't want to get into that because when I saw this movie when I was a kid, I loved that creature design. I still love that creature design. I understand why there are problems with it, but to me, he just looks like a big gremlin. And I love that because I love gremlins. So I don't have anything negative to say about his look. He's not the most intimidating of the mutants, but he is my favorite mutant. He is the fun one who was always rapping and doing weird things like that. Another really cool tie-in for horror fans, the other mutant, Ramsey, was played by the guy who played Hockstetter in Sorority House Massacre 2 and was in Hard to Die and from Freddy's Dead and all of those things. That really uh, heavy set dude with the mustache that's just got a very unique look about him, he plays that mutant. This cast is outstanding because in my personal opinion, guys, this movie is 100% popcorn as fuck because I think that this movie is super important 
in the grand scheme of things. And I think that this is one of those movies for people who just don't want to grow up. So if you don't want to grow up and you really enjoy that vibe of slapstick Saturday morning mutant mayhem craziness, then this movie is perfect for you. It's perfect for your kids. In fact, get a copy of this movie, introduce your kids to it, because this is a movie that I think is that perfect first or second film for a young child to get into this type of stuff. Because it's got some stuff that could be considered nightmare fuel, that's for sure. But it's also light enough and fun enough, and it has a hero. And kids need a hero, goddammit. And now you know, and knowing's half the battle. But you know, out there in the real world, this movie might not be mind-blowing, it might not be Oscar-worthy to the average consumer, I suppose, but in here, in 3B video, this B movie is the movie. But uh, I suppose I should probably get going, because after all, there's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's gotta watch them, so why not me, right? Ding, ding, ding! No. <laughs> Bloops! The bloops.